In this section, we're going to talk about networking communication between your services. Networking communication, in my experience, is a lot more complicated than what people think it is. There's a lot of nuance here, and there's a lot of timing and race conditions that can adversely affect communication here. And we're going to take a look at a lot of those things during this section so that you have a really good mindset about how to be thinking about this and coding it up. It also requires that when you are architecting your system that you code things with retries and so on to be fault tolerant. So let's start by talking about the eight fallacies of distributed computing. This is actually a pretty well-known thing, and I put a link here to a website where you can go and read a large document that goes through these. But this, uh, I put it here as the first slide in this section because it really drives a lot of the conversation. So let's walk through some of these fallacies of distributed computing. The first fallacy is a lot of people think the network is reliable. But in reality, the network is not reliable. The network connections, they come and go, there's timing issues with it, and so on. And so what this means to you is that when you are architecting your distributed cloud application, your application needs to be able to handle error handling from network communications, and typically we do this by performing retry operations. So we tried to make a connection, that failed for some reason, we're gonna retry and make the connection again. The next fallacy is that the network latency is zero. People think that, well, the two machines are next to each other and there's a wire there um, and the, the communication is going to go blazingly fast. However, as I mentioned earlier in this course, a lot of times for resiliency reasons, you want to put different services on different VMs, possibly in different racks, possibly in different availability zones, possibly in different regions even. Uh, and the topology or where these things are located, you really would like to not have to think about that. You want the orchestrator to decide where these things go and to do the right thing for you. What this really means is that latency is not going to be zero. There is going to be some performance impact or time required for your client to go and talk to a server. So this means you should try to minimize the number of requests that you are making from your application. You don't want to make a very chatty application that talks a lot. You want to reduce those number of requests as much as possible. The next fallacy is that the bandwidth is infinite. No matter how many bytes you send, it's going to be able to take it all. But that's not true. A lot of services, they do throttling. They will only accept from a single client. Well, let me rephrase it. A lot of services are multi-tenant services. So there's a lot of different clients who are using the same service. Well, if one client is hammering that service with requests, then that service might not be able to handle requests from other clients. So what's frequently done is the multi-tenant service in implement some kind of throttling mechanism, where if a certain client is sending in you know, more than a thousand requests per second, it starts immediately failing those requests and saying the server is busy. The server may not actually be busy. It's just going to report that it's busy because it's trying to leave some bandwidth available for other clients that may be trying to hit the same service. And while you're communicating between services on a wire, there are other services that are communicating on that same wire. So some of those services might be sending a lot of packets on that wire, and so your service might be having trouble getting some packets in. So again, the bandwidth is not infinite, and in fact, not only is it not infinite, but it dramatically changes over the lifetime of communication. The end result of this is that your application should send small packets, small payloads, right? Try to send small pieces of data, not large pieces of data whenever possible. The fourth fallacy is that the network is secure. The application has to secure its data and authenticate requests, uh, is what that means to you. Now, I have talked about how when you create a cluster, a virtual network is set up between all the nodes of the cluster. And that is true, typically, and therefore, no other services or machines outside that cluster can see any of that traffic. So in that regard, the, the network is secure. But let's say inside that cluster, somebody goes and loads some third-party component, right? Some component that you, know, you got from a customer, maybe, and you're gonna execute some of its code. 
you don't know what that code does anymore. And that code might try to talk to other services that are within that cluster, and maybe it shouldn't be allowed to. And maybe it's looking at some of that traffic. So you have to think about those kinds of things carefully and possibly set up security boundaries around them where every client request coming into a service, even if it's on the same cluster, you may want to do some kind of authentication there to make sure that it's allowed to do what it's trying to do. Uh, this is especially important if you run third-party or untrusted code inside your cluster with you. The next fallacy is that topology doesn't change. So again, I've mentioned where the orchestrator might decide to take your, you have two different services and they happen to be on two different VMs on the same physical machine. And then the orchestrator decides for some reason, maybe for load balancing, to take one of those VMs and move it somewhere else. The orchestrator is allowed to do that because, again, that's considered an implementation detail, and it's really something that you're paying the orchestrator to do for you to do this load balancing so you get better performance. And there may be other reasons why the orchestrator does it as well, possibly failure um, or just some other reasons. So, in other words, the topology, where your services run um, within a cluster, that can change over time dynamically really behind your back. So this, just be aware that what this means is that any latency, bandwidth, or endpoints, another a good one is endpoints. If you know the IP address and port of a service, the orchestrator might move that service somewhere else, and now the IP address may no longer be accurate anymore. So you have to write your code, again, resilient enough to be able to handle these kinds of performance differences or endpoint differences. I will talk more about the endpoint stuff very shortly. Another fallacy is that there is one administrator, um, meaning that there's only one person who's control. But really, in an orchestrator world, you kind of have this other administrator, which is the orchestrator, that's kind of acting on your behalf. And then, of course, you could have multiple people who are trying to configure the orchestrator. So this really means that changes affect the ability to reach the destination. Right? You might think that there's a service, and I know its IP address, and I know its port, but maybe some administrator came in and made some change somewhere, and now that is no longer true. And you would like to be resilient against that kind of thing. The seventh fallacy is that the transport court is, cost is zero. Um, sometimes you're charged for data that leaves a data center. In fact, frequently you are charged for that. Um, so it's not just that there's the performance cost of it, but sometimes there's an actual you know, money, currency, that's associated with that. And so when you are designing a service that's moving a bunch of traffic, especially if that traffic leaves a particular data center, a lot of times you're charged for that, so you have to think about the budgeting um, of the cost of running the service in order to handle that. And then the uh, eighth and last fallacy is the network is homogeneous. Um, and this affects reliability, latency, and bandwidth. In other words, it may not be all the same networking hardware. All the networking cards may not be the same speed. Some of it might be fiber optic. Some of it might be copper. Um, you know, don't, uh, don't make any assumptions, right? All of this boils down to don't make any assumptions about the network. And in order to not do that, you're going to have to write code in a different way in order to be resilient against these kinds of fallacies of distributed computing.